tell it's going to be good, Jay. Hit me with it. Hey, Raul. Yo. Do you hear about the guy on the wheelchair that stole all the camouflage clothes from the sporting goods store? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. He can hide, but he can't run. <laughs> I'm proud no, of myself for that one. I like that one. I'm I proud was, of that. I knew it was going to be good because you wasn't reading it off or nothing. You <laughs> practiced it. I'm proud of you. Yeah. That was good. It's a little wordy, but oh, I'm proud of it. You're going to hate my joke next week. Oh, God damn it. You're going to hate it. I'm going to have to will you away. <laughs> well, I can't I can't run. <laughs> Not because I don't have legs. It's because I was fat. Ha. Hi, folks. Hey. What up, familia? Welcome to another episode of Pops On. I am one of your hosts. I am Jay Alvarez. Across from me, as always. It's Rose. What's going on, people? And we have got Marcel on the ones and twos. Welcome to episode Smooth Colt 45. Ah, uh, I saw it coming. <laughs> I, I love Billy D. Williams. I, <laughs> I want to put him on the cover of this episode. We're not even talking about him, except for right it. now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to find it. Gonna what find up, it. folks? Uh, welcome back to another episode. We have, uh, we, we're recording a little later in the week than we're used to uh, because life. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, we actually have a couple couple pieces of news, a couple things to talk about. But first, we're coming off of Father's Day weekend. Hope everybody had a great one. Hope you enjoyed waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. to cook for your ungrateful families. Mm-hmm. Because if you were a mom on Mother's Day, they'd have made you breakfast in bed. Exactly. Instead. We had to wake up at 6 a.m. to like the goddamn grill that we barely understand. Fam, I'm still waiting on my breakfast. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my breakfast. Yeah, but did you get a bow tie that you'll never wear? Yeah. Yeah, see? Always. It's and blue. And that, that little clay ashtray that you had to ask four times what it was before they told you it was an ashtray? Yeah, and it's, I don't even smoke. Yeah, no, because it's a plate anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Put my cereal in there. Yeah. One Cheerio. Well done. <laughs> anyway, so how was your how was your weekend, bro? How was your week? My week was good, man. Uh, it was Father's Day week. Kids were preparing all week. What do you want? What are you gonna do? What do you want? Uh, listen, man, I just want to be left alone. Like, if I can just do that for at least two hours, I'll be fine with that. They did it. Nice. They did it. That, that's what I wanted. Left me alone for about two hours. They came home and you know ensued and bothering me and doing the doing the things that they do. But it was nice. I got a little card uh, with a, with an old photo of them and then a new one. So I took that to work, um, and I and I, uh, I I I had some medium well steak. Oh, did you now? Yeah. Look at you. You know what I'm mad at more than anything? Mm. Out of all the movie stuff we post, out of all the re- other stuff we post, the thing that got the most interaction on our <laughs> Facebook page was you disrespecting <laughs> dead cows. Yes. <laughs> People were pissed. Oh my god, it was so great, guys. I don't eat steak. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know what any of that means. Medium well, rare. I don't. I don't care. I don't eat it. Okay, so you, you finally had a medium rare steak. Medium. So you you jumped straight into the deep end. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Might as well. That that was that was that was foolish. Where did you eat this medium rare steak? Oh, it was chilies. You are a son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. No, that's not how you do this. Okay, so first, <laughs> let, let's go ahead and back this up because you, you it was it wasn't a good experience from what you told me, right? It was okay. I mean, you know, it wasn't the best, but I. I finished it. No, okay. I didn't. I gave it to my daughter. I didn't finish it. Uh, nope, I didn't. So, so you you got to baby step this, man. First, you got to go to a place that actually makes steak. Mm. Chili's does not actually make steak. Chili's mm. disrespects the dead carcass of a bovine animal and then puts it on a plate where it can be further disrespected. Yeah. Um, you want to go to like a reputable steak place. <laughs> a reputable source. Texas Roadhouse is a great steak place. Yeah. Um, you want to start with medium well a little bit. Maybe start with medium. Medium rare is kind of like pro level shit, and mm-hmm. you're still playing triple A ball. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. you can't go straight. You can't go from Japanese triple A to World Series. Okay, I get it. All right, I will definitely make a trip to Texas Roadhouse soon. Well done. Well to, done. Uh, to, <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not well done. Uh, uh no, but it, it, it. So I had that. It was. A, it was. A, I was like, all right. I get. I get what you're saying. It's a lot juicier. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, other times when I would order a steak or make steak or whatever, it would be well done because that's what my mama taught me. So I figured that's what it's supposed to be. Um, but it was not bad. Uh, I ate it. It went down good. I didn't get sick like I thought I would. So mm-hmm. that's that's a plus. Um, took a drive down to what Fort Lauderdale. And we're gonna talk about this a little further. But I, 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 Nas' album came out. 
So what that did was made me go back and listen to every Nas song that I ever liked. Find out it was about 54 Nas songs that I like. <laughs> and driving by yourself on these long drives without having to skip music or anything, that shit is the best. Yeah. It's nobody asking to hear, oh, I want to hear Osuna. I don't even know who or what he's saying. I, that is, uh, no, Osuna is a hidden character in Street Fighter. Oh, no. Right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. No, no, it's a, it's a little, little, little Spanish Jamaican looking dude that my son seems to love. And by the way, my son's in the studio with us, guys. He's over here playing PUBG on my phone. I don't know what, what PUBG is, but it's a man running around in underwear. He probably oh. shouldn't be playing this. Fair enough. To be honest. But um, yeah, man, that was the best thing ever. I listened to like every Nas song on the way down, singing my heart out. And I was like, this, this I miss this type of music. There's not a lot of that going on these days. Yeah. We will get into that later, though. Yeah. Yeah. How was yours, bro? Uh, I thought that was cool, man. It was relaxed. Um, Really wasn't much going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is good. No, we went to my brother's house. We barbecued. We all hung out. Uh, we made, we, we made food. My brother, my brother has perfected barbecuing chicken. Nice. Uh, which I'm proud of him because I taught him how to do it. Hmm. Um, and that was, that was really it. We really didn't do much. A lot of Fortnite got played. What movie did we watch? We watched Harry and the Hendersons again. Oh, nice. That's yeah. good. That's a good family flick. It's because look, we, grandma don't speak Spanish. I mean, I'm sorry. Grandma don't speak English. Mm-hmm. You don't need English for Harry and the Hendersons. No. You can sit there, watch it, and enjoy the hell out of it. No matter what you speak. Yes. Absolutely. That sounds like a good one. That was cool. Um, today, though, uh, I did something today that I haven't done in years. Uh, I got out of bed at 6.30, uh, woke up the boy, and we went and played basketball. Wow. Yeah. My fat ass was running up and down the court uh, trying to chase... A relatively in shape twelve year old. <laughs> relatively, <laughs> no, because he plays. He plays football. He plays basketball. So he's in shape. He's yeah. got cardio. Yeah. I am six two, on the wrong side of two hundred seventy five pounds. Nice. I ch- I had no business. I had no business. <laughs> I know what I was doing. I thought I remembered. I used to play basketball when I was like twelve, and <laughs> it's it's not the same. The game done changed. Um, that was what. 14 hours ago, now I'm sore, my back stiff, Yeah. Uh, I don't know which way is up, and I'm pretty sure I'm bleeding in the back of my mouth. I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. You look out of it a little bit. A little bit. Walked in here a little wobbly, I was like, eh, maybe, maybe it's normal. What happened? Oh, I jogged four steps 12 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> so excuse me if I seem a little pecked. Yo, that's gonna, be, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, cause I'm, I'm ready to sign Mason up for basketball, but I know I'm going to have to do all this running with him. Yeah. I have to. And I'm trying to coach my son. Like, my son needs work. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he needs work on because <laughs> I don't play basketball. Oh, man. I can tell him, all right, you, you look like you're throwing the ball instead of shooting it. But it's also going in the hoop. So, so I, 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 I know he needs to work on his handles. That much, uh, that, I can't even do that. That much I can tell. Okay. It, that, that's it. I know, I know he needs to work on going to his left Mm. Uh, because I know everybody needs to work on going to their left. Uh, and that's only because I watched Hanging with Mr. Cooper once about 20 years ago. Wow. I went old school with I it. love that show. <laughs> I, know, I know that one. I was alive for that, so I'm cool yeah. with that. Yes. All right. I'm cool with that one. So God, that's damn. that's why I'm, I'm sore, I'm ornery, um, <laughs> and, and I'm mad that I haven't lost all the 60 pounds that I'm trying to lose. Um, I, I ran this morning. Why am I still fat? Yeah. 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 That's Because by fat out. man logic, I worked out once. I should be good for the next seven months. And that's the next... They're not going to do anything until the next seven months. No, I actually, no. I have to wake up and do this again tomorrow morning, oh, uh, which, I'm, which I'm dreading. S- he's with you for the summer. He's with me for the oh, summer. You, oh, you're oh, you going to get in shape, buddy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to end up paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> I've, already, I've already updated my will. Uh, I've already updated my power of attorney nice. and my beneficiaries. Nice. Uh, Lorraine... I love you. I'm probably worth more uh, to you dead. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at my policies and I'm like, oh, wow, I contribute nothing in life. No, <laughs> nothing. God I damn. also realized that I have Lorraine as my emergency contact. And I've realized that the goal of adulthood is to list someone for your emergency contact that isn't a parent. Yeah, it isn't mom or dad. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. As soon as I realized, I'm like, oh, this is adulting. Yeah, I changed mine because um, I started working on my job a while ago. And I changed mine from my mom to my wife, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. 
this is, oh, I'm old. Yeah, it's a weird thing. That's one of the weird things you notice about getting older. Like, oh, mom and daddy are my damn emergency contacts anymore. Yeah, they're uh, not even on the list. Uh, yeah, right. Don't, they're not even they, the top four anymore. Yeah, they're, they're like, don't, don't, and they say, don't call me if something you have. Call your, call your wife. Yeah. Like, no, but what are you for? You're calling me because you don't want your wife to know. I'm not playing that. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, no, I'm hurt. Like, yeah, call your wife. But I'm hurt. Mm-mm. Yeah, God, yeah, God rest her soul. My mom's, was, yeah, she definitely said, no, don't call me. Call your wife. You moved out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and, you, and you know what? That's not even life, that's not even life advice. That's just being bitter. <laughs> she was upset. Oh, oh you man. replaced me with another woman? Okay. Let me tell you something. When I was moving out, my mom lost her mind. She was like, she called my dad. Could you believe it? He's moving out. And he, and he was like, "Dad, that's that's what he's supposed to do. What are you What are you mad at?" That's like what she hung up on. <laughs> I see him having that major pain moment. Why I say, "Pop yo titty out his mouth, yeah, and yeah. stop babying him." Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, and uh, just to even because I drove down to Fort Lauderdale just to have you know get away. It was my mom's birthday on Saturday, so she turned fifty one. Again, she's just passed away. What? Damn, this she'll be five years. So okay. Five years. Um. You know, bought some cheesecake, saying happy birthday. That was about it. That, that's how my weekend was. All right. That's how it was, man. Ooh, but um, cool. yeah. Well, well that, hope hopefully everybody else had a had a good weekend. Pops, hit us up. Let us know what you guys did for Father's Day. Uh, we like to live vicariously through you because, uh, well, it's more fun that way typically. Facts. <laughs> yes. Damn. Getting into some box office numbers though. Uh, this weekend we saw a debut. The long awaited debut. <laughs> Yeah. 14 years in the making. Goddamn. Incredibles 2 came out, opening to $182 million. Yes. Biggest, biggest animation opening. Holy That's crazy. Wow. That's amazing. I, I and Unfortunately, I haven't seen it. My kids did. They went without me. Um, but it, yeah. I, I'm not surprised at the numbers, to be honest with you, because this, this is 14 years in the making. Yeah. The people my age, your age, are taking their kids now to get in on this, but it's not for them. Yeah, it ain't for the kids. This is for us. No, I've been waiting 14 years to see what the hell Jack Jack ended up doing. Yeah, because his his shit looks amazing. And to what I'm hearing, the movie did not disappoint. Yeah, nothing is ever going to be as good as the original. We all get that, but this this is a close second. I hear. I hear this is a close. It's close to beat to beating it, and um, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, we, I only see it going further uh, in the coming weeks. We were gonna try to watch this over the weekend, uh, but the kids messed up. I ended up being that dad. We were in the car. <laughs> we were on the way to the movie theater. The kids started acting the fool. Uh, Lorraine, she was the first one to say, "I will cancel these tickets, yeah. and we will get refunded." And finally, we had the last straw, and I said, "All right, that's it." Refund the tickets. I'm turning the car around. And oh she said, wait, God. don't turn the car around because we still got to go to Winn-Dixie. And it was in the same <laughs> plaza, but not the point. The point is, we didn't see the movie. Damn it, I put my foot down, and I kind of wish we watched Incredibles 2. I know, because it wasn't Because it hurt me. <laughs> it hurt me. I'm going to turn this car around. Do I, it then. What? Damn, like, in, <laughs> in the back of my head, I was like, no. <laughs> damn, you but not- we, I heard. I heard it was good. I heard it was good. My 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 kids seen it. They he not, my son didn't, didn't see the first one, so he not he's asking to see the first one. Yeah, so I was like, how, how you you ain't even invested. Yeah, you ain't even invested. Yeah, no, that's what the whole like all the kids. Everybody's like, oh, it's a great movie for the kids. No, you own this. This is for you. <laughs> Don't come at me with that. The kid. This is the kids. And now I can't watch it this week because Jurassic World two comes out this weekend. Yeah, I'm definitely watching that over. Incredibles. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's gonna. It's hopefully, hopefully at some point we get to make some time. Um, number two, opening at number or opening at number two. Um, coming in at number two uh, in its second week. Was it the second week? Second yeah, week. second week. Uh, Ocean's eight coming in. Uh, came in at eighteen million. Um, <laughs> you know, about ten percent of what the number one movie made, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's crazy. And yeah, yeah, but it's still good. Number two, uh, beating out a host of other films. But um, I still haven't seen it. I'm still hearing good things about it. Uh, it's a great heist film. It's a great. It's a great film to, to you know for the girls to go out and watch with they with the other girlfriends and all that. So that's dope. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 still excited to see it. So I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, I'm probably going to check it out at some point as well. What I'm thinking of doing is we're just going to recreate uh, my movies with Dad, and we might buy one movie ticket. Mm-hmm. And go watch about four or five movies. Goddamn. Oh, I remember those days. Remember those days? I remember those days. I mean, I like to think I'm a better person now, and I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But I'm going to be real. Yeah. 
just be, be honest it, with it, yourself. If the opportunity presented itself where I could, where I could do it, that's a lot of movie tickets. <laughs> exactly. Yo, we gonna talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming in at number three, uh, Tag at fourteen million dollars. Uh, Tag stars Jeremy Renner. Um, Ed Helms. Ed Helms is in it, and a host of other people. A couple other people. Uh, John Hamm. John Hamm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard he did a good job in that one. Lil, Lil Rel uh, is in it. Um, it. It's grown men. Hannibal Burst. It's grown men playing tag. And it, it looks like it, it looks like it did fourteen million dollars. Looks like it's doing pretty well, but the reviews are garbage. The reviews are garbage. I heard, but I heard it was a decent movie about friendship and all of that. It's it's you know some some movies you can't really look to reviews to to just go watch it. Yeah, just and go, I mean it's an original film, right? Go yeah. watch it. Give I mean, it if you chance. can call tag original, okay. Yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> my question is, it, like with the uh, with the reviews being garbage. Uh, I mean, obviously, this movie wasn't meant for Oscar contention. Right. But how could, how does a movie about a bunch of grown men playing tag fail? It, it, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like, mean, it's, it, go it's... Go watch it, guys. I'm, I'm definitely excited to see it. It's, it's, a, it's a comedy. Um, it's about friendship. It's about how, you know, people... It, it shows a lot about, about how people drift apart after uh, high school, what have you, or after college, or what have you. Yeah. Go off into their own lives. These, fr- these friends come together and play tag. I think it's like every May or some shit like yeah, that. Every, yeah, one month every year. It's yeah. just like no holds barred. Everything yeah. goes tag. And somebody, I think Jeremy Renner's character has never been tagged. So the entire plot of the movie is trying to tag him. Before he retires, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, that that that, that sounds interesting. Fucking go yeah. watch it. Come on. It sounds like it sounds like a fun, fun time. Yeah. Uh coming in at number four, uh, surprisingly still. Uh <laughs> <laughs> we have Solo, a Star Wars story, coming in with ten million dollars. Uh, total gross for this one is 193 million domestic. That's ridiculous. Uh, you mm-hmm. finally saw this movie. So let me tell you something. I went to the movie theaters. Uh, before I even say that, this, this you know. Wait. Oh, do we need a spoiler warning? Just yeah, a little spoiler. Yeah, alert. spoiler alert. Spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Uh, but but this right here, what I'm about to say, ain't got nothing to do with the movie. This is about the movie theater going experience. My son, I'm sorry, I cursed. My son is five years old. I don't really pay for movie tickets for him. I yeah, don't. I don't. So it was me, my son, and my youngest daughter. We went. It's just us three. Nobody else in the theater. So I said, yo, let me get two for Solo. Two? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, you have... It's three of you guys. I don't, I don't pay for him. He doesn't... I don't pay for him. Well, if he sits in the seat, he has a, There's nobody else there. He, he's going to sit in my lap. The bitch made me buy the ticket. I bought three tickets to oh. see Solo. I was pissed. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, on to Solo. I liked it, man. I liked it. Really? I, I liked it. There were certain parts where it was a little like, all right, come on, get to the point. But overall, I liked it. The story was decent. I see the direction that they're trying to take with these Star Wars movies. They have to go to the past in these Star Wars movies so that they can flesh out more stories. And spoiler alert, spoiler alert, we all know that Darth Maul comes on at the end. Yes. Darth Maul is actually the big bad. He's not the one you don't he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't see you don't see him throughout the film. Right. But he is the one that they keep talking about. You keep hearing really? about this red, I think I forgot the name of the red something. It's him. He's like a crime lord. Uh-huh. And at the end, you know, someone goes off to go meet him and wherever he's at. That's a whole nother movie. I see what they were trying to do. And you know, people I get and I'm probably one of them, so are you. We saw all the stuff behind the scenes and we saw all the bullshit that's been going on. We're like, ah, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see this movie. It's 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 doomed from the start. If we all gave Marvel a chance to bounce back from all the little mistakes that they made in the beginning, whether it's Iron Man 2, whether it's Thor, what have you, we need to give Star Wars Kathleen Kennedy a chance to go ahead and do what she's supposed to do. If they stay on this course 10 years down the line, we'd be like, holy, sh- oh man, this is amazing. Okay. It could have been. It, it could be some good, great stories. I understand. You know, you don't want to shorten the universe. You want to expand it. But we don't really know much about Darth Maul. And if you he's don't. still alive, he's and another spoiler for like uh, Rebels. Yeah, now he's dead. Like dead. Right. Current timeline. Current timeline. Dead. But if we're going back and seeing what what came what came about, let's do that. I would like to explore that. He was a dope ass character in Episode One yeah, that he was. didn't get shine. Yeah, he was. He was. He should have been the big bad for that for that trilogy. That was yeah. a mistake, but whatever. Let them try to right those wrongs. They did it with Rogue One. This is them trying to right those wrongs with with the solo movie that we didn't want. But I get it, completely get it. Um, 
the uh, not Benedict Cumberbatch. Who's the who's Vision? Who plays Vision? Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany is the big bad. Uh, it was originally supposed to be Michael K. Williams. Um, now the seeing is he was supposed to be in like some kind of makeup as some kind of Catman or whatever right. as the bad guy. I'm a, I'm a little happy that that didn't go through. I'm be honest. It look, that would have looked weird. Okay. That would have looked weird. Uh, Paul Paul Bettany was was a good bad guy. I, I like that he was menacing. Um, he did a great job. All right. I don't. I, I. I don't doubt that Michael K. Williams would have done a good job, but from what they wanted, I was like, "Yo, that doesn't even." I don't even want to see that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Michael K. Williams, though, yeah, he's a I, phenomenal actor. Absolutely. I mean, he he goes from Omar to, I mean, just Omar, because Omar's yeah. got like eighteen different things going on at yeah, the same time. I remember that. Yeah. Scary show. Watch The Wire, people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and but, coming in at number five, uh, Deadpool two. Uh, holding it strong in the top five, rounding it out with eight million dollars, uh, two hundred ninety-four million total gross uh, domestic box office. I, I I'm still waiting to see this movie again. Yeah, yeah. I was going. I was supposed to go watch it over the weekend again too, but I, just, I couldn't. But it's a lot going it's, on. It's 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 still great. I, I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go watch it and I'm gonna be just as entertained as the, the first time. Yeah, I love it. I loved it the first time, so I'm gonna love it every time. Absolutely. Now, yeah. uh, staying along with the Disney. Uh, theme. We got some breaking news. This yeah. actually broke today. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, kinda. Yeah. Uh, so we all know that Disney uh has been in talks with Fox to acquire their the you know essentially everything that Fox has short of Fox Sports and Fox News. Mm-hmm. Uh, Comcast started coming out of the woodworks saying, "Hey, we're getting this off already, and uh, we're gonna give Disney a run for its money." Uh, Disney said, "Screw your cash, cause we got it in bundles." Facts. Um. We and they brought out the wheelbarrow. So Disney apparently outbid Comcast and uh, has made a seventy-one point three billion dollar offer. Yes. Uh, now this is spread in cash and stock. Um, this makes the sixty-five billion dollar cash offer that Comcast came up with uh, look like chump change. Yeah. Which for Disney, sixty-five billion dollars. It probably, probably is. is chump change. <laughs> I mean, have you seen the ticket prices? They made sixty-five billion dollars this afternoon. Just for people getting into Magic Kingdom. Yeah, exactly. So, uh... <laughs> That's crazy, but yeah. And, and, and the reports here are varied. Um, the Some are saying that the there is ink on the paper. Other people, other sources are saying that it hasn't been signed yet. Yeah. But this seems like it's going to happen for sure. What do you what do you think on I'm it? I'm thinking it's going to happen. Because, um, all right, so, what, $71.3 billion. Uh, I think $35 bill of that is in actual cast to rest stock and other options, right? Yeah. Um... The sixty-five billion from Comcast is cash. I'm feeling it, and you said that they just finalized that AT and T deal, right? Yeah, they might be able to do some work with the stock options after that. I don't know. I don't see anybody out bidding Disney. You know what I mean? I feel like Disney's gonna come with well, some more shit after. Well, the the AT and T was AT and T and Time Warner. Oh, Time Warner. Okay, yeah. So, not so not Comcast not. was waiting to see how the courts ruled on that one because yeah. it was a lot of antitrust going on. Gotcha. So gotcha, Comcast gotcha. was waiting to see if the court allowed that to go through. That's when they were gonna officially make the offer for okay. Disney for uh for Fox. For Fox. And if it didn't go through, they knew that they were gonna have to go through the same hurdles and loopholes, and they were gonna just kind of like wash their hands of it and say, all right, we're, it's we're not done. worth the effort at that point. All right. Well, um, it looks like Disney got got. They might have it in the bag like i said we we you said the you know reports are saying it's done some reports are saying they're waiting on a counter offer i think it's done yeah i'm pretty sure somewhere there's mickey mouse smoking a cigar saying ha ha sign the papers uh-huh. <laughs> exactly <laughs> nah man and and, and hey you know, Minnie, let me finish on your face ha-ha. jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> so um did this <laughs> We are excited because we're getting the mar- all the Marvel characters, right? I'm excited because I made Mickey say something dirty. <laughs> but at the same token, to be honest, it it's opens up a whole lot of doors, man. It, it's it's not because they're getting FX, FXX, all those shows, Atlanta, all that stuff. Um, and their streaming service is coming next year. Yeah. Top it's of the, coming uh, quick. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's it, they're, they're, they're gear, gearing up to make sure this shit is right when they launch. I'm definitely signing up for that streaming service, but um, I don't see any kind of offer coming from Comcast. Yeah, no, Comcast, Comcast can't fight Disney. They, that's I get that Comcast is trying to be the little, the little, the little guy that could. Mm. Um, but you, you, you talking about Disney money? Yeah, man. Like they, that, they're still they 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 got what three or four movies in the top fifty. 
Yeah, Disney, <laughs> like, Disney's led still. Disney's led the studio income for the last what five years in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, they've already hit over five billion dollars this year, I think. Exactly, they have. Yes, yeah. So that's what I I appreciate Comcast for stepping up to the game, uh, trying to come up off the bench. Way to go on your kids. Hopefully, next time you actually make it to the starting lineup. Um, but until then, <laughs> sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Damn. Yeah, man. I, I'm. I'm sorry. I can't even curse because Mason is just looking at me. Um, the swear jar is just growing. Yeah. The um. Yeah, man. I'm excited about it. Um. Again, it's not just that Marvel deal. It's everything that's about to go down. And you know, think of think of the Simpsons. Think of Family Guy. Think of Modern Family. Think of all those shows that's on Fox. We finally get the Simpsons and Mickey Mouse crossover we've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. No one knew they wanted it, but now you do. Yeah, exactly. I'm with it. I'm all the way with it, man. I'm excited about it. We more news to come on it still. I'm it's still undergoing some stuff. So we definitely going to keep a close watch on it. Can we can we pop the champagne yet? No. No, don't pop the champagne okay. just yet. Okay. Not until we know the ink's dry. Right. But it is fun. It is exciting to think about all the projects that they that that are p- possible now. Yeah. Um. All all the things that may come. Some of the things that are coming from Disney. Uh. We're we're gonna get into the trailer into the trailer park. Yes. So. All right now. <laughs> Disney. Uh. Recently released the live act. Uh, the trailer for the live action Dumbo. Yeah, man. Um. And I have I actually watched Dumbo a couple years ago again. Um. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Not a, not a kids movie at all, uh, but I, I'm excited for it. It looks good. It is a CGI elephant. What yeah. the hell did you expect? But this is also the same company that did Jungle Book. Yeah, I'm all the way yeah. with it. This is Disney CGI. <laughs> yeah, this, this is not like some bullshit. This is Disney. So it looks amazing. It looks looks like it's staying true to it. Uh, it stars Michael Keaton, uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. That's yeah. the name I was trying to remember. Colin Farrell, uh, Danny DeVito, and it's directed by. Tim Burton. Yes. What did we just realize? Yeah, this this is Batman Returns. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's the Penguin and Batman. Yes. With the director. Exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. Uh, Michael Keaton, phenomenal actor. Colin Farrell. I don't care what nobody says. He's a great actor in my opinion. So long as he's not throwing a phone at anyone, I think he's fine. Oh, was that phone booth? Yeah. Ah, that movie sucked. Oh no 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 no! He actually threw a phone at someone in a hotel. <laughs> Yeah, you know this. This is like me. This is like off the movie set. Like he was at a hotel. Wow. Something happened. He ended up throwing a phone at a bell band. Oh no, he's a dick. That's yeah. messed up. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm excited to see it. Uh, it's coming out March of 2019, so we got a ways. Uh, but psh, shit, the way this is going, not really. We, it's right around the corner. Yeah, really right around the corner. Year's almost done. It's almost time to light them Christmas trees up, guys. Mm-hmm. Um. What did you think? What did you think about the trailer? Man, I'm excited for it. I I definitely got excited when I realized that Danny DeVito, Michael Keaton, and Tim Burton were in this because that's I mean it's there's some things that looked like uh, you know there's some scenes that look really out there and if Tim Burton like if this CGI was available for Tim Burton and Michael Keaton when they made Beetlejuice, oh, I'm pretty sure we would have got some similar scenes. Oh yeah. So I, I I think Tim Burton's gonna have a lot of fun with this one. I typically. Uh, or well, I'm honestly surprised that uh, Tim Burton made a movie that Johnny Depp isn't in. I'm st- I'm just waiting to hear that Johnny Depp is Dumbo. <laughs> Yo, that will be. That will it's be drunk, Dumbo. drunk Dumbo. Drunk <laughs> Dumbo. Oh, or the man. rat. You, uh, we didn't see any sign of the rat. The 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 Dumbo's friend. Oh, the little yeah, rat in the little mid- rat. The little the little sideshow rat. I'm 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 <clears throat> I'm almost certain He's that Johnny Depp is gonna be the rat He's or Dumbo. Be um. But I was excited for it. My son used to love Dumbo. It was one of his favorite cartoons when he was a kid. Oh, so we tough. watched it a lot. My favorite part of the trailer was the song. Because it's the song that all the mother elephants sing when they're getting the babies delivered. Yeah. And uh, it, it was really cool to see, hear that song and see the storks flying at the beginning of the trailer. That was, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, Dumbo. Like, I didn't even know what it was. Nice. <laughs> And I got so excited for it that when I got home, I called everybody in the living room like, everybody watch this. And then as soon as they saw what it was, everyone got mad at me. Yo. Uh, because they're like, this is what you're wasting our time for? This, this is, is what you little... called us away from what we're doing? I am glad I'm not the only one that does that. Anytime a dope trailer comes out that I think is just, just me, mm-hmm. I call everybody in the living room. My wife, the kids, everybody. And I'm like, yeah. really? Are you, we've seen this already. I know you've seen it already. Watch it together like goddamn fans. Yeah, no one, none of them had seen it. Lorraine was kind of like, eh. Until she saw Tim Burton was directing, she's like, "Oh, hello." <laughs> so, so that's cool. So I got I got at least one believer in the house. Nice. Um, 
but we, we, I'm happy about that. Um, happy to see what's going on so far. Disney's been killing these live action remakes. Yeah, man. Uh, um, I'm, after I'm this excited. one's Jungle, uh, not Jungle, but after this one's Lion King, if I'm not mistaken. Is it Lion King? When the hell is Aladdin coming out? I, I think like... Aladdin comes out after Lion King. I'm but excited it's... for that one, but I'm excited. I'm excited for both, but I'm definitely excited for Aladdin. I am too. Uh, Mulan is shaping up to look real good. I haven't heard any news yeah, on they, Mulan. They, it's an all Asian cast. Well, for once. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to see... <laughs> you, you, you're telling me Scarlett Johansson isn't playing an Asian? No. Oh, okay. For neither ke- Neither is Keanu Reeves. Oh, or, Tom Cruise Tom isn't Cruise? playing yeah. The Last Samurai again? <laughs> nope. <laughs> He's playing I want Eddie Murphy. Um, do you think they can get him... Uh, do you think it would... Like, who else could do it? That's like saying... Because, I mean, honestly, who else could replace... Uh, what's his name? Oh, damn. Robin Williams as Robin a genie. Williams. See, the only way you can do that, the, what I'm hoping happens in Aladdin, we're getting way off topic, guys. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> the only way they can do that with Aladdin as Will Smith as genie is that they don't even try to be Robin yeah, Williams' it has character. To be completely Will, different. Will Smith is funny. People yes. forget that he was in Fresh Prince mm-hmm. and he 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 can do comedy and he can do comedy really well. Yeah. Um, so he is, and he raps. So it's not, it's really not too far of a stretch for him nope. to play something similar, but he's got to make that his own and not try to mimic Robin Williams at all. Like this is his genie. Is him, yeah. it, like he needs to be more Shazam. Okay. Yeah. He needs okay. to be, not that I want Shazam. I'm getting dirty looks from everyone. Yeah. Who's the dog right now. No, I don't want Shazam. I just, he needs, he needs to just not be Robin Williams. Like right. don't even attempt it. Just do your own Make thing, your and own. at that point, I'm pretty sure he's gonna stand on his own. I hope they get someone good. At, I I don't know who they would get as 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 was it Mushu? Mushu. I don't know. I never. I honestly, I never saw Mulan. Oh, you need to watch it. It's definitely on Hulu. or Something. I think. I'm, I'm sure. Watch it. Way off topic. <laughs> um, what is the other one? <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of standing on its own, uh, Creed two. Yes. Creed two trailer drop star Michael B. Jordan and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I, I, God damn it, I love Stallone now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He he I still I still have a hard time understanding him without captions. Mm-hmm. Um, but he I, I love the way he came up. I still haven't seen the first creep, but I've seen clips of it. Okay. And I love how he is kind of embraced his age. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I, I could yeah. see Stallone doing something dramatic so long as there's an edge to it. Like he he can't just play like some drop, you know, like Stella. He's not Marlon Brando. No. But I could see him doing something like that in another movie. Yeah, um, no. Yeah. And, and I, I love the trailer. What, what did you think on it? Um, so I've never really watched the Rocky movies, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's get that out of the way. I was excited for Creed 1 because I'm a Michael B. Jordan fan. He, he's, he's, he's been killing it you know, up until that time. Is Kugler directing this one Kugler too? Kugler is not directing he's not. this one. He's not, okay. And that's another t- thing I want to touch on too. He's not, but it's somebody he did go to film school with, another African-American director. Okay. Um, I love the first one. The first one, I, I watched it in theaters. It was great, well written, well acted. Stallone did a phenomenal job. It's, it Creed is on Hulu if you have a chance to watch it. Oh, it is on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Check that out. It's really good. I like the story. I like everything. You know, he's trying to you know make everything come up on his own name. He doesn't want to be oh I'm not Creed's son or blah blah blah. Um, Tessa Thompson, love yes. her. Love Tessa Thompson, and you can't get no better than uh, what is her name? Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby's wife. Oh Jesus, in the Cosby Show. Oh, um, um, Felicia Rashad. Felicia Rashad, she's in it. She plays uh, Adonis's, uh, not Adonis, because Adonis is his son. He, she plays Apollo Creed's uh, widowed wife. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, she she goes and finds Adonis, and I know that you know you you're, you're his legitimate son. I'm gonna raise you, blah blah blah. Um, so in the first one, it shows, you know, his, he, he, he's a fighter. He has it in his blood. Uh, he was fighting in Mexico and all this other shit got beat up and then he moved to Philly so he can train with, uh, Sylvester Stallone. This one now, and, and, you know, he ends up beating, he has a really good fight. Uh, we, he, he didn't win the fight, but he, 15 more seconds and he would have, he would have won. Right. Um, this one shows now he's made it. He's in the big leagues. You've seen it from the, from the show, from the right. comer- commercial, from the trailer. He's he's the main attraction now. He's the big guy, so he's he has a lot to lose, as he was saying in the trailer. He has a lot to lose. He has a family now. He has a daughter uh, with Tessa Thompson, uh, and he's about to fight Ivan Drago's son, Victor Drago. I don't know his name, but I guess you probably saw it there, Victor Drago. Um, I'm excited to see that. 
I am not. I I will be there opening day to watch this 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 bullshit uh uh, uh boxing match because it will be the best boxing <laughs> match I've seen in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably better. Probably the best since uh Holyfield Tyson too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's gonna be it. Um, yeah. I'm excited for it. I, I I like the fact that it's a different director. I I I like when different directors take on projects. Some some. Not all. I don't want the one director to stay with the project and it gets stale. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, if and I like that cooler doesn't do things if his if his heart is not in it. Yeah. I like that. Cool. Have somebody else do it. Let's get a different take. Let's get a different vision on it, and then let's go from there. And the, the, uh, we've seen we've seen great trailers to shitty movies. Don't get me wrong, but this movie looks phenomenal. Yeah, I don't see this being a problem. If I'm not mistaken, Stallone actually wrote this too, didn't he? Yes. So, yes. and Kugler Kugler had a hand in it as well. Yeah, and Kugler absolutely did. I, I just, I love that, you know, people don't realize how good Sylvester Stallone, how talented he mm -hmm. is, really. Because people, Rambo was also his movie. Rambo, um, uh, even the expend, all the expendable shit was his too. Yeah, those are his too. Like, yeah. people forget that Stallone's not just a, a you know, a weird looking dude with, yeah. a, str with a slurred voice yeah. who, 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 who looks good in a box. We're like, the man's talented. The man can write. The man can, you know, bring up product. He he's it, if if it was twenty years ago he'd be Donald Glover, you know, yeah. like, the, like he can do so, he can even do porn. We saw he, well, I didn't see it, <laughs> but it's it's been proven he can oh do my anything. God, <laughs> Donald what? Glover ain't done porn, oh. so no. Oh my <laughs> God, <laughs> <laughs> that was the money shot, Adrian. Adrian, Adrian. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> Get down! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's all bad. It's all bad. <laughs> Keep playing your PUBG, Mason, please. Uh, this, is <laughs> this is fun, guys. This is fun. Oh. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. But yeah, no, I'm excited for Creed Two. Uh, I, now that I know it's on Hulu, I definitely have to check out the first yeah, one. Man, no, I wanted to check the first one. It's just one of those movies that got away from me. It's so. really good. I, it's one of those movies that I can watch over and over again. I've watched it maybe four or five times. Ah, oh, man. It's good. It's really, really good. Man. So that's definitely I'm something I'm going to give a chance to. Yeah. Um, November now, 21st. No, yeah, November 21st, 2018 is uh, is the release date. So, you know, not much coming up in the holiday season. Mm -hmm. um, this probably is going to get some legs. If it's good, it's going to keep those legs for a little while. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And, and Michael Jordan is on a high. I, did, I didn't like Fahrenheit 451. I didn't thing. check it out yet on HBO. I didn't really like it, but he did a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. That's all that matters. Well, um, now we're gonna we're gonna come to uh, 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 another segment. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna let Raul take the reins on this one because right now we're eight tracking. Yeah. Before we get into that, because we meant to talk about this in the very very beginning, we definitely want to you know say a rest in peace to XXX Tentacion, who was murdered on uh, this past Monday in Deerfield, Florida, uh, at an attempted robbery coming outside of a motorcycle. Yeah, uh, a motorcycle shop. Uh, the reason why I'm saying it in, in during this because I I we I let Jay listen to one of his songs uh, for eight tracking. It was one of we, I I think it was one of our first eight tracking. Yeah, one of the first ones, and I Jay was like, I can't deny this. This kid has talent. Yeah, yeah. And that was that was wasn't that the track that I said sounded like Big L? Yes, that yeah. track. That track, and that's one. Of the, and and the crazy thing is, that's one of the episodes where we was like, who is an artist that um, you like or you see a lot of potential in, but they just can't stay out of trouble. Yeah, this he was one of them. Don't get me wrong, but he, in the past year, he was trying to change around his life. He was nothing about. He was all about positivity, um, he, from his music to his uh, everything. He was he was trying to change his out uh, the world's outlook on him, but also influence people to listen. You, you change, do better, be better. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Do whatever you whatever time you have on this earth, make sure it's worth it. Make sure you 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 improve upon someone else's life. Yeah. Um. It's it's sad. Um, you know, he was only twenty years old, only yeah. twenty years old, and I just got into his music. I, I I still I still listen to the album. The day from the day it came out, I clicked, I clicked on it by accident, but I still listen to the album. So when I got that news, uh, I I I felt the way. Mm -hmm. I felt the way because I knew that you know his he has a huge fan base. He touches a lot of a lot of that doesn't sound right. He, he touched a lot of lives, uh, <laughs> and with with his music and his message. Uh, his first album, not the one I played for you, but the first album, dealt with a lot of mental illness, a lot of depression, and, and, and you know what he was going through. Second one was a lot more upbeat, a lot more lively. It still has some emo tracks on there, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it showcased his talent. It was, in my opinion, was a phenomenal album. Right. 
Um, I didn't realize that he was from South Florida. Yeah, yeah, bro. I would, yeah, I didn't realize he was one of my peoples. Yeah, and man. I'm happy that that's coming out instead of uh, Stitches. Yeah, right? Jesus Christ. Or Lil, Lil, Lil Pump. No, he's he's a big deal, Lil Pump. I hate, I hate that. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Yeah. I don't wish death on anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Yes. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want anybody's families to have to go to a funeral. Right. But when fa- when when you look at the options, <laughs> why him? <laughs> why why was he represent us? No, nah, I don't know, bro. Um, but no, um, and and it's a lot of it's, it's it's it's. I don't care about what he's done in his past. He's been trying to change. He's been doing well with it. We all saw it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yes, the allegations against him are crazy, but they're allegations. It's alleged. Yeah. He was never char- he was never convicted. All right. So, separate the art from the artist. The man died. Yeah. The man made great music. Okay. Let's 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 honor him. Let's not bring up all his stuff. I don't want to hear. Oh, but he wasn't no saint. Yeah. Neither are you. Yeah. Just because your mistakes are different from his doesn't mean they're not still mistakes. No, everyone deserves a shot at redemption. And exactly. if and he, he was, if he found an opportunity to get up out of what he was doing and, and try to try to live life more positively, it, it, it stinks to have that taken away, especially so young. I remember there was a rapper out of Savannah, Georgia, uh, mm. Camouflage. Mm. Uh, it was the same thing. He had just hit his, I think he had just hit his first like big track. Right. Um, and somebody in Savannah walked up to him. He was actually carrying his daughter. Damn. And, and and off them and it, and it's uh, you know they say it's a robbery attempt a lot of times it's just somebody trying to be a name yeah man and that's listen folks it's not worth it no you ruin your life you were you were in a lot of people's lives it, it, it's not just his yes his family and his it, I don't know if he has a kid I think he does actually but his fans really are like because they look to him they, he's he's young he's twenty he was the voice of that generation of that yeah. generation you know what I mean. Kids, you know, talking about killing himself mental. He was a big mental health advocate. Like, yeah. not on some, I'm just trying to sell an album. No, he was legit because he had mental issues and trying to change it. So, again, you know, big rest in peace to, to XXX Tentacion. If you hadn't gotten a chance yet, listen to his album. It's a question mark. I think it's called Questions. I'm not sure. Listen to that album. It'll it'll change your outlook. He's not, don't, don't sit there and he's like, oh, he's just another mumble rapper. No, he wasn't at all. And I, yeah. I, I vouch for that. He wasn't. Yeah, I I hate most mumble rappers, and I will say that that one track. I don't know about anything else, but I know that one track sold me. Exactly, exactly. So again, big rest in peace, X X X. But yes, I am going to take the reins on this eight tracking topic here. Some albums dropped over the weekend, man. Uh, a couple different ones uh, from J Rock, from Nas, and the Carters. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first up, I played J Rock. Uh, the album the name of the album is Redemption. Uh, and I played King's Dead. King's Dead is the number eight track. Uh, King's Dead is featured on the Black Panther soundtrack. Yep. But this one's slightly different. It doesn't have the extra verse from uh, uh, Kendrick. Kendrick on the on the on the track. So what did you think? What did you, what did you think of that song? Um, so oddly enough, J Rock is the only album. The Redemption is the only album I've actually listened to. Mm. <laughs> I, I figured that it's it's the first time where you brought me an eight track, and I was like, oh yeah, I've already heard this album. I like it. Matter yeah. of fact, number four is my favorite track. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, so Kings that I, I already liked the track when they released it before Black Panther. It is different. I did miss K Dot's verse because it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Um, but yeah, I I, I like the song. I love that album. J Rock is holding it down for the West Coast. Yeah. Um, I mean, you hear J Rock anytime Kendrick comes out because they work real close they, together. Yeah, they're they're a part of the same crew. Yeah, Ab Soul yeah, uh, is always involved with them. It, it's it's really cool to see uh, the West Coast having kind of a revival. Because yeah. it used to be for a long time, it used to be where the worst thing you could be, the worst thing you could do as a rapper is be from the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you always had like E Forty that was always holding it down for the Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, the game, you know, for a little game, while was yeah. kind of leading the the West Coast revival. Yeah. Uh, but and now you have people like J Rock. Now you have, for Sean is another one out of the West Coast that mm-hmm. doesn't get a lot of play. See, I know rappers. He know. Um, he know. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie Gibbs is from uh, Gary, Indiana, but he definitely adopts that West Coast. vibe. I think he lives out in LA now. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, there's there's a lot of good stuff coming out of the West Coast, and this yeah. album was one of them. I, I was listening to it in the car with Lorraine. Uh, a lot of it is some hood shit. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it is some like you know the stuff that we used to listen to when we were younger, mm-hmm. which I appreciate. Uh, 
<laughs> she looked at me. She's like, I, I like to think that we're evolved past listening to this. And I said, well, I'm evolved past living this. Yes. But, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and it's not to downplay anything. It, it's true. It is A lot of it is, it's not stuff that I would like my son to listen to. Mm-hmm. But at that same end, it's the same stuff I was listening to at my son's age. Exactly. You can't be a hypocrite about and that. I, and I know it's the same stuff because I can understand it. Yeah, look at you. He's You're not bubbling. <laughs> yeah, no, and I like that. You're right. Uh, the t- Top Dog or TDE, Kendrick, uh, Schoolboy Q, SZA. Yeah. SZA like, any SZA, album that yeah. comes out from that camp, uh, J-Rock, Isaiah Rashad, uh, Absol, I'm waiting for another Absol album. Amazing I, artist. I, I kind of want to see them team up with the Dog Pound. Oh, because that used to be old versus old school. Yeah, because that was the crew that was coming up back then. You had mm-hmm. Corrupt, as Dillinger, yeah. Nate Dog, rest in peace. Rest in peace um, yes. Snoop Dogg. There, there's a lot there. Even Dr. Dre could come up with it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, so, there's, so there's a lot. I, I would like to see kind of that. Old school West Coast come up with a new school West Coast and try to see some work doing with them. I'd also like to see Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole do a song together. And yeah, that isn't happening. That's so. not happening. But J. Cole is on that J. Rock album. They both on the album, yeah. but they can't they, they can't even just... they even separated the tracks. Yeah, yeah. Bastards. <laughs> but um I, I like I said, I like everything that comes out of TDE. Uh I listened to that J. Rock album before I listened to anything else, actually. Well, we'll get into why. Uh but that J. Rock album is phenomenal. I played it straight through. I didn't have no I didn't I didn't have to skip it or anything like that. Um mm. I believe my favorite track, not favorite, but the one I listen to the most is uh, right after yours, number five. I think it was "Keep It Rolling" or something, something like that. I forgot. Yeah, I love that whole album. Definitely yeah. a great album. I, I will say, J Rock has been. I've listened, like I said, I, I've been listening to J Rock for a little while. He's definitely consistent. I love his yes. other albums. I love some of the singles that he puts out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, matter of fact, the only reason I know who SZA is is because of J Rock. Yep, yeah, because he had that Traffic Jam remix. Uh, with um with Kendrick Lamar, SZA, and uh, and J Rock, obviously. Yeah. Um. So I- I'm happy to see that he's doing well. I wish he had more notoriety. Yeah. Uh, I wish more. He was a name that was more popular out there because you know he's a rapper he's that good. people don't have to interpret. Yeah. He's really good. He's he, people definitely go listen to that J Rock album. It's called Redemption. Listen to it straight through. And and please listen to these albums straight through. Don't just pick a song. Don't start at track eight. Start from track one so you can appreciate everything on that album. I disagree. Listen to track eight and decide whether or not you want to listen to the album. That's the whole point of this segment. What are you trying to do to me, man? I, listen, man, I, I I have to listen to old album, whole albums. I do. And and another entire album that I play straight through because, you know, it's only seven goddamn songs. Oh, we got another one. Fucking Kanye. Nas. The Nas album called Nasir. Now, here, here's why I listen to J-Rock's album first. Because Nas' album was supposed to drop Friday. That shit didn't hit till Saturday morning. Yeah. So I was like, all right, let me check this damn J-Rock. I was going to check it out regardless, folks. Sorry to disrespect you, J-Rock, if you're listening. But uh, yeah, I was, I was looking for that Nas album, okay? I'm a, I'm a New York native. I got to hit that Nas. This album was very good. Very, very good. The, the, production, the production on it, uh, of course, all Kanye. Say what you want about anything else he does. His production is still A1, in my opinion. No problems with the production. Um, I played track six because it's only seven songs, and a, a track was Adam and Eve featuring The Dream. What did you think? Eh. Really? It wasn't bad. Mm. I, I felt like he was trying to find that sound he had in Uchiwali. Wow, that's disrespectful. No, it, 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 don't, it really did. Like, after a little while, it started, like, getting home. I'm like, it's, on you. this sounds like something. This sounds mm-hmm. like he's trying to do something. And then I think it was like the snare, or there was something that I heard, and I'm like, Uchiwali. And then I started hearing that beat in the background mm-hmm. of that song, yeah. and I realized that it was kind of the same flow he was kind of going for. That remember that whole Queensbridge yeah. mixtape era, and I, I mean it was it was an okay song. Mm-hmm. I not my my problem with Nas. I, I like Nas. I respect what he's done. Mm-hmm. I get bored with him real easy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he he's very he's kind of monotone. There was that one song he put out. Not was it nasty? Which um, one? Uh, it was uh. Uh, yeah, I think it was nasty. It came out in like 2012 or something. It was the first time I had ever heard Nas rap fast. Know my style? I think it was. I don't remember. No, I think it was nasty. I think it was nasty Nas, or um, it, it started off with like it was like a block party and it had an MC yelling, "Y'all ready for some nasty Nas?" Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know you're talking about. Yeah, and, about. and that was like I had never heard him rap that fast, and I was like, "Oh, okay, this is something different from Nas." 
And that was it. And then after that, it went right back to his regular... St- I, I feel like it's like listening to Illmatic all over again. Hmm. Well, I mean, shit, if that's what it is, I wouldn't be problem. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, no, no, and that's not to knock him. It's just, mm-hmm. to me, I'm just, I'm just, I, I get bored with Nas. You want to switch it up a little bit. Yeah, and that's my own, that's my only beef with him. I, I, I love what he's talking about. The lyrics are always on point. Mm-hmm. Nas has always been fun to watch. He did that, uh, he did that project with Jack White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And, and I like that he's, He's willing to experiment with that. He's willing to step out of his comfort zone. So I've always respected him for that. Mm. That doesn't change the fact that I get bored with the guy. This, this track wasn't any different. It was it was cool. And it was just, okay. It's right. not. It's not. I can see where you say that because, like I said, on that trip down to Fort Lauderdale, I I like I put fifty four Nas songs that I like from Nas. And you know what? A lot a lot of hits, a lot of lyrics. Love every minute of all of the music that he's that I have in that playlist. Um, you're right. He doesn't really switch the flow up. He doesn't you, really switch switch up the, his beat selection. And he talks about that on the album. People criticize him for his beat selection because he always works with Salam Remy. I get it. But that's what works for him. Yeah. Well, do we criticize J. Cole? It's the same thing. No. Because he, he makes his own beats. It's not the greatest. Mm-hmm. But we I don't listen to J. Cole and Nas and even Kendrick for the for their for their beat selection or what I, I want to hear what they're saying. I want to hear the message. And <clears throat> on this album. Much like the 444 album, he's speaking grown man talk. Yeah. He's speaking... My son has to pee, guys. <laughs> Welcome to fatherhood. Welcome to fatherhood. Give me my phone. I'm not even cutting this out. Are you playing? No, I'm not playing. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I listen to the whole thing. And it's, Fuck it, we're doing live. Yeah, we're doing live. Um... I get what you're saying. I don't criticize. I don't. I don't criticize. I don't go to Nas for the best beats. I don't go to J Cole for the best beats. Kendrick has the best of both worlds, to be honest with you. His beat selection is amazing, in my opinion. Yes, <clears throat> and that's that TDE formula. Um, but back to the Nasir album, I liked. I liked it. I don't. There's no skippable tracks on here. The first track is actually featuring Puff, so that's more of a reuniting for the Hate Me Now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a dope song. It's a dope song. I just want. I just want to know why nobody want Puff rapping on any song. Just talk. Just talk. <laughs> they never want Puff rapping on any song. Just talk and, and, and get it over with. That's all. Um, so that's he's on there. You got Kanye on there, of course, because he produced it. Dream is on there twice. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. I, I like the album. The album is really good. I get where you're coming from, though. Uh, it can be like, all right, my man, would you still this, switch this, it up a little switch bit? Switch it up a little bit, and that's what gets me the difference with with J Cole when you brought that up. Mm-hmm. J Cole switches his flow up. That's true. You know what I mean? Like you can you don't get bored listening to him because it, it does it, it, he he does switch it up a little bit to make it more engaging. With Nas, it's just the same. You are gonna get what I get? What I the put same out. flow, the mm-hmm. same tone. I'm not so worried about beats. You're right. I don't listen to him for the beats. Yeah. I listen to Timberland for the beats because I know he makes some decent ones. Absolutely. Even though they all sound the same still. Um, <laughs> Shade. It still sounds like up jumps the boogie, but whatever. Um, <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Whatever Ain't happened old. to Magoo? Really? Um, Ooh, Magoo. Oh my God! I remember that guy. That's a name you haven't heard since Magoo. Up Jumps the Boogie. Um, but, and Magoo. <laughs> the but yeah, with that and that's like I said, I don't disres- I, I I respect what he's done for it. I don't dislike the album because I did hit listen to the album the whole way through. Also before this. Mm-hmm. Eh, I just walked away with it like with that opinion. Just like eh. just so, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm hearing that from a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing that from a lot of different people. Yeah, it was okay. I expected more. See, I, I didn't expect more. This is exactly how I feel about every Nas album. To okay. be honest with you, it's like eh. a lot of people. I, I you're right. This is I expected this, and I like what he gave me. I like the fact because before this, Nas was doing tracks with Future. He was on fucking DJ Khaled's album. And I was like, I don't want to hear Nas on any of that at all. I don't want to hear you on a trap beat. I don't want to hear you with too much 808s in the back. Nah, fam. Sit your ass down on the stoop with a mic and just rap. Just give me some bars. Give me some lines. And I like I liked the album. I loved every track on there. Um, like I said, it made me go back and listen to a lot of his stuff from all, from Illmatic all the way up to Nasir and everything else in between. Streets Disciple, uh, Hip Hop Is Dead is one of my favorite albums. A lot of people don't like that album. Mm-hmm. But it takes me back to a time, like I just graduated high school when I came out. Um, that album, uh, Godson, is one of my favorite album from him. That's when yeah. uh, that's right after the beef between him and Jay. 
I listened to that album straight through. That's when his mom just passed, so that's why I relate to that album a lot too. Um, I I am a Nas fan. I I I am one of those who knows that he won that beef between him and Jay. Yeah. However, Jay and Beyonce are some petty motherfuckers. Because <laughs> 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 these niggas gonna drop an album the same day as Nas and just drown out anything that he would have had. Let me tell you something. I wonder how Kanye took that. Oh, fuck Kanye. Um, <laughs> but, um, because he gets that Kanye on his album, kind of, you know, subliminal. Yeah. <clears throat> but, again, the Carters, Be- uh, Be- uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z uh, dropped an album Saturday uh, called Everything is Love. Nine tracks. Uh, surprisingly, I'm not mad at the nine tracks. Okay. I f- it felt complete. So mm-hmm. I'm not mad at it. I-, I-, I let you listen to Black Effect. Before we even get into what you feel about it, the reason why I believe they have so much success with this, they don't do interviews. They sh- shit just happens. They are fiercely private. Yeah, yeah. Shit just happens and it just happens to get out. And we, well, not me and you, but people clamoring for, yo, what really happened? What really happened? They don't do interviews. They talk about everything in their music, which is phenomenal in my opinion. That for for sales, yes, because everybody's gonna want to listen to get in your business. So why not put everything there? Don't put it in an interview where where this person gets a million, a hundred million views and you get nothing from it. Put it all in the album. Let them come listen to it. Um, nine tracks. Uh, I believe this is the culmination of a three part trilogy from Lemonade, 444, boom, they together. Love is everything, or everything is love. So I let you listen to uh, Black Effect. Effect. Mm-hmm. What did you tell me when that was done? Black Effect is a song that lasts five minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, Black Effect is a song that goes four minutes and 15 seconds too long. <laughs> I was done with it after the first minute. I'm sorry. I mean, you say, Beyond, look, I've never been a huge Beyonce fan in the first place. Mm. Um, she had that one track that came out in 2003. Uh, it was like the first, like her first solo. Oh, it was like 06. Oh, the, the, the bootylicious shit? Not bootylicious. Uh, no, no, not bootylicious. Before, I think before that even. Um, it was And Jay-Z was on the track, uh, matter of fact, too. I think it was when they first started dating. And oh, 03 Bonnie and Clyde? Hov and B? No, oh, no, before that even. No, no, after that. After that, I'm sorry. Um, I can't remember what it was, but she had she was wearing, like, shorts and had this jacket on. She was dancing oh, on the street. You I know, know what I'm talking about. Uh, whatever the song Crazy in Love. Yes, yes, crazy, crazy in love. love. Crazy um, love. that you know that song holds a special place in my heart only because I was in Iraq when it came out, and I was like, oh, this is some music. Yeah. Um, that that that's really it. Aside from that, I'm not a Beyonce fan. Jay Z, I used to love. Now Jay Z sounds like he's in the. Jay Z sounds like he's got early onset dementia. What the you listen to his flow now, it's like he forgot he was rapping. He forgot what he was talking about halfway through the bar, and then in the middle of it, he remembers, oh shit, the end of the sentence has to rhyme with the last one. <laughs> Damn. I don't know what's going on with Jay. Like, it's, it's just, he sounds like an old man. In, he's, he sounds like an old man. He's 48, 49 this year. I don't care. He, he's he, old. Stay, be, <laughs> stay ass out the studio. Uh, like, I love Jay Z. Don't get me wrong. I you got um uh, in my lifetime. Okay. Uh, streets, streets is watching. Is watching. Yeah. Yeah. Jay Z. Even with his early stuff when he was still coming out. You know when he was still like under Jazzo's wing. Yeah. Like I like Jay Z. Back in the day, <laughs> I like what Jay Z used to be. Now it's you know four forty four was cool. We listened to a few tracks. This, I, like you, you, again, we're just eight track, and I haven't listened. I didn't even know this album dropped. Oh yeah, yeah. until oh, you told me we'll, earlier today. We'll explain why you didn't yeah. know it dropped after this. <laughs> I had no idea this album dropped. We listened eight track, and honestly, after that, I wouldn't have. I would not have listened to a single track on this. I would have put it away. Said, "All right, well, this is done. This is over." I yeah. dig it. I dig it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that they're working together. Because the husband and wife, and that's cute. That's as far <laughs> as it gets for me. Let me tell you something. I, uh, I like the album. Uh, Black Effect, again, what I told you, I like to do, I have to listen to the album straight through because you get the vibe of everything. By the time you get to Black Effect, you're already, you're already in it. You're already invested, right? right? Um, I like the album. It was a surprise that they dropped only on title on Saturday. We will get to that after this. Um, I, I listen to every track. It really details 
you know, it talks about, you know, the, what, what, why he didn't go to. And when I say this, it may sound corny, but it, the way it was done is not corny. Because when I think of a whole and Beyonce album, I think back to all the songs that they did together. Crazy in Love, awesome. Upgrade You, okay, I'll give you that. Y'all still together. O3 Bonnie and Clyde, classic. Then you got stuff like Hollywood that was on um, ah, that, that Red album that came out same time as the Hip Hop is Dead. Um, Kingdom Come. That shit was trash. Um, lift off from the from the from the Watch the Throne album, trash. Um, okay, they did uh, uh, crazy and uh, little drunk in love. Cool, that was a little that was that was a moment, right? It was a moment. It, I like the song. It was a moment. Cool, but overall, the songs that they had together was fucking ridiculous. Like, it, sorry, mix. It, I didn't like it. I didn't. I don't want. I don't care that y'all together. Do that shit separate. I like Hove. I like Beyonce. I didn't I honestly. I didn't even like Beyonce's uh, solo projects until the Beyonce album came out with that crazy uh, drunken love song. Right? Mm-hmm. Cool. So when you say, "Oh yeah, they're gonna do an album together," I don't want to hear it. Nah, man. They did a good job. Yes, of course they complement each other well because they've been married forever. Um, but they talk. This is the this is the conclusion to the trilogy. Yeah. Cheated. I'm sorry. We in love. There is a song on here. I think it's called "So Happy" or "Happy Love" or whatever. The very last track, he's like, Jay is like, "Yeah, I had to go over there to get a new ring," and she was like, "Yeah, because you fucked up the last one." And he was like, "Yo, chill," and like this is this is happening in the song. You fucked up the last one, yo, chill. He's like, "You look at it, meet that bitch." He's like, "Yo, chill," like pulls it all to the side. I like that back and forth. Mm-hmm. That was dope. It's art. I get it. That's cool. But um, we gonna get into why nobody knew this was happening. Nobody knew it was dropping. Yeah. S- some somebody's gotta go in the corner. So we th- Pops is putting baby in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um as we all know, Kanye is the corner. Mm-hmm. Um however, Kanye has gotten a little bit of a reprieve lately. Mm-hmm. Uh this week we are putting someone that we all know. Mm-hmm. Uh this week we're putting in someone that were is near and dear to all of us. Mm-hmm. We've all watched this person evolve mm-hmm. from never eating a steak that was cooked any less than well done. <laughs> To having a crappy medium rare steak, um, Raul, I'm gonna need you to turn your chair around because mm. we'll put your ass in the corner. God damn! Now go ahead and tell the world what you did. Okay, let 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 let, let me explain why. So Saturday, chilling, right? Excuse me. I believe the first thing you need to say is what had happened was. Okay, what had happened was. Thank you. Saturday, I was chilling, scrolling through my phone, get a notification. Beyonce, Jay-Z drops a surprise album. Oh, shit. I'm about to go listen. No, I'm not, because that shit's on title. I am well documented and say I am no longer using title. I am no longer going to create these fake accounts so I can get this 30-day trial off and listen to this goddamn album. Well, folks, let me explain to you that I spent the entire Father's Day weekend trying to create a fake account so I can get this 30-day trial off. I did. Uh, I'm not proud of it. Uh, I, I, I'd i say it was worth it, but it wasn't because I still don't have it. <laughs> uh, I, so Saturday, I'm trying to create the account. I created the account. Cool. I download title on my phone. It logs me back into the to the account that I had when Sprint was given the, the, the six months free when Jay-Z's album came out last year. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't log me out. It just, I download it, logs me right into that one. And you click the song, sorry, you need to update your subscription. I created a whole nother account, wouldn't let me log in. So I finally said, fuck it, I went to bed. I woke up, I'm still on my head, still on my mind. Mm -hmm. So I go back, I'm going through forums like, yo, why is it still logging me in, why is it still logging me in? I found out that because I'm on the Sprint network, it's not, it's not, it's just going to log me automatically into the Sprint account. Yeah. So in order for it not to log me in, Put your phone in airplane mode, then go on your Wi-Fi. Then it'll give you the login screen so you can put in your own login account information. So uh, I did that. Uh, and my stupid ass left my phone on airplane mode the entire day of Father's Day. <laughs> so I'm sitting at home like, yo, why is nobody... I mean, I know I only got three kids. Well, why I'm not getting no messages, no phone calls, grandma... Like, what happened? <laughs> What's going on? I'm just sending text messages and nothing is going through. <laughs> just so you can listen to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Just so I can listen to Jay-Z and Beyonce. And I still couldn't. 
So then I was like, oh, I signed my phone up for the six months trial. Babe, I didn't sign your phone up. Give me your phone. Sign her ass up for the six month trial. Didn't matter because I still can't log in on my phone for the six months trial. So I get up Monday morning. I remember I have Mondays off. That's my day to do nothing. And I turned my phone, you know, I restarted it or whatever. Didn't think nothing of it. Every text message, every every voicemail, everything came through. And I was like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're over here upset that nobody gave you a call. <laughs> and your phone was on airplane mode this entire time. <laughs> and so, meanwhile, everybody else is like, see if I tell you Happy Father's Day next year. That's dick. what my sister said. Yeah. She said, I don't never tell nobody else but my father Happy Father's Day. And I text your ass and you didn't text back. I cursed out Monday. And... On top of all of that, the goddamn album was available everywhere on Monday. Except Spotify. Except Spotify. She cursed out Spotify. Sorry, guys. I'm pissed. I was pissed. I was pissed. I wasted two days. <laughs> well, you can be pissed, and you can turn your chair around and think about what you've done. Because this is what happens when you try to game the system. Mm. You, can't yeah. get, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't, and, and especially, especially for something like this. Listen, man, I'm not you proud of it. You were trying to game the system for title. You weren't even trying to game the system so you could went play like more trivia crack or something. No. Like, you you just... You, you, it's Jay-Z, man. Sit your ass in the corner. <laughs> Think about what you've done. <laughs> I'm so, we'll talk I'm, about this later. I'm so hurt. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, folks, do you have anything you regret doing? <laughs> have you ever made an effort for absolutely no reason Nothing. where the fruits of your labors were not worth it, which None. is moldy, low-hanging fruit? <laughs> Go ahead and let us know about it on social media. You can hit us up on Facebook at the Pop Song Podcast. Mm. Hit us up on Twitter at the Pop Song Pod or Instagram at the Pop Song Podcast as well. Shoot us an email if you'd like to remain anonymous. We are at nodadjokes at gmail.com. Mm. If they want to voice themselves, uh, where can they call us? Raul. <laughs> <laughs> you can call us at 321-405-2219. You can hit us up on Snapchat at Pops on underscore Snap. Also, uh, we are on WhatsApp. Give us, give us, a, you know, can leave voice notes. You, uh, that's for our overseas people. We will play them on the show. Your best dad jokes, your movie reviews. <laughs> what did you think of the albums? Nas, J, B, J Rock. I really like that J Rock album. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Please listen to it. Um, again, big rest in peace to XXX Tentacion. Listen to that album as well. Uh, you will enjoy it thoroughly. I guarantee it. Um, man, I'm. Am I? So, how long am I gonna stay in this corner? Until next week. Okay. All right. Anyway, folks, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna be right back. Uh, go grab a drink of water. Go do what you gotta do. Go check on your kids. Maybe, we'll be back. Maybe. What's going on, Pop Song Nation? This is your boy Raul of Pop Song, and guess what? Your favorite dad's got a new number, new phone. Who this? Yeah, man. You guys can reach us at three, two, one. Already. This call will be recorded what and monitored. Hell? I have a collect call from. Hey, I got a dad joke for you guys. What? What does a snowman eat for breakfast? An inmate oh, at Lord. a San Bernardino County. Bro, who do we know in San Bernardino jail? Oh, sh- how did he get this number? Anyway, um, yeah, three, two, one, four, oh, five, twenty-two, nineteen. What the fuck is going on now? Hello? Okay, yeah, listen, I'm ready to come pick up my two pies. I nice. want everything on it. Whoa. No onions like last no, time. No, no, wait time a minute. Stop, shit. stop, stop. No. Who do you think you're calling right now, dude? I'm looking for Sal's pizza. This is not Sal's, dude. This is Pop Song. Pop Song? Yeah. In Florida? Yes. You gotta be kidding me. Yes. I love you guys. Oh, okay. This is incredible. Yes. Bro, it does sound like you. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. All right, you know, get on that Twitter shit and tell them to the will do, partner. Will do. All right, listen, take care. Peace. Let me turn this damn phone off. Listen, 321 405 2219. Call us, leave a voicemail, send us a text message. We definitely want to play these voicemails of your best dad jokes or your topics on the show at some point. 321 405 2219. That's Pop Son. You guys have a great day. And welcome back to episode 45. Smooth, like Colt 45. Smooth. Coke 45. Uh, welcome back, Familia. We, uh, we're we back from our little break. We're here with your dad topic of the week. Yeah, man. So, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a point in your life that you come to where, as a father, you have to figure out when you make a mistake or when something happens, 
do you A, destroy all evidence that it ever happened in the first place and cover it up? <laughs> or B, do you own it? Do you wear it on your sleeve? Do you let your children see it? And what do you do to handle it from there? Um, and for this, we're going to bring Raul back out of the corner for a little bit, just for a little bit. He's going right back. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to bring him out because this is something hitting near and dear to his heart at the moment. Hey, Raul, what's hey, up? Hey, guys. Hi. It's me again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope you spent some time thinking about what you've done. I did. And I'll do that shit again. <sighs> Jay-Z, damn it, Brooklyn. That's why you're staying in the corner. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, no, this this po- this topic was inspired by uh, with Marcel. Thank you for uh, hitting the group chat up with something other than you being home and horny. We appreciate that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, basically, you know, you, are you super dad or are you super dud? And honestly, I have two answers. To my son, I I have to show him that sometimes you got to make sometimes you make mistakes. I have to show him. All right, so so he can understand that, and I'll get into that a little a little more why going forward. For my daughters, I try not to because I need to be the best possible man in their life. Um, I need them to understand that this this is the type of person that you need to be with. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? because they say you know you you're your first your daughter's first love. I get that. My sister, my young well, not my youngest, well, all of them to be honest. My dad could do no wrong. That is super dad. Yeah. That that let me tell you something. They swear by that man, and I for for good reason. He takes care of what he needs to take care of every time. No, there's no questions asked. His his job is to take care of his kids. That's what he does. So my whoever's with my sisters is gonna have a hard time <laughs> figuring out how to how to maneuver around them. Right. Because they're used to a certain thing. So that's how I want to appear to my to my daughters. To my son, lately, because he's been on this damn Fortnite shit and other games he plays, but th- I'm sorry. Yes, I'm talking about you and your Fortnite. Uh, he doesn't understand that sometimes you lose. Uh-huh. He is not a good loser at all. At all. Sore loser. Yeah. Whether it's cards, whether it's Fortnite, whether we're playing Nerf guns, he doesn't, uh, he, he, has, he feels he has to be perfect every time. I understand you want to strive for that, and that's cool, but it's not going to happen every time. Sometimes right. you are going to fail. Some those failures teaches you le- teach teaches you lessons. Mm-hmm. It teaches you, you know, okay, look back. What did I do wrong? How can I improve? All right, go back and do it again. Um, with his, you know, he's gonna be starting kindergarten. He's gonna be starting karate and and basketball soon. I'm telling him as of right now, you have to play to have fun. I understand you may be maybe super competitive and that's great. But right now you don't know much. You don't know much of the fundamentals of the game. You don't know you you're still learning everything. You're literally learning everything right now. Yeah. You're going to fail at times. As, and I have to explain to him I fail at times. When I was your age, I failed at certain things. I wasn't I wasn't the best student. I wasn't the best basketball player. I was I was I was me. I fail. I am human. And that's what I'm trying to teach him now. Um a little humility, a little, a little, a little ways to move past that to improve. Every every failure is not a failure; it's a lesson. You learn it. Look back on it, see what happens. How can you improve and move forward? Um, and even as far as like being vulnerable or you know showing emotion, definitely show emotion. I have to show emotion. You can't be cold to your kids. Right. I I <laughs> again, my dad never seen him cry until my mom passed. N- none of that. I just thought he was just fucking he man. Right. He <laughs> said nothing. Right. I can't do that. I have to show them that it's okay to let certain things out. You can't keep things bottled in. It goes that goes into a lot of deeper things. I'm not gonna get into all that now, but you can't keep things in. Talk. You know what I mean. You have an open. You have open floor with all of us. You can talk to me. You can talk to your mom. Your sisters will have you. Um, and same for my daughters. They. And that's why they come to me and tell me everything, which, like I said, sometimes I don't want to know. But I like the fact that they can do that. So I have to show them, like, yeah, yeah, I make mistakes. I'm human. Things happen. Things break. I I mess up. I do. I am human. So I, I don't want to hide that from, you know, I, I you know, try to show them that I'm not, I am human. I don't want to hide that from them. But at the same token, I'm more so for my son 
because I don't want, I see that he is striving to be a perfectionist and that alone can tear somebody apart. Right. Very, very, very much so. And, and, and he's learning. He's getting better. I, what I told him now, the reason why he's not playing the Fortnite or doing anything, like learn your schoolwork. If you're going to get frustrated about not knowing something, get frustrated about not knowing your schoolwork because then it'll, it'll push you to continue to learn it. Because when you play in these games, oh man, I did, I messed up. I got to go back. I got to do it again. Right. I need you to have that same energy when you're doing your schoolwork. Right. I don't care if it's summertime. Summertime is where you lose everything. Get these words. Study. He's, he's reading books. He's trying to read a book. Now he got the brown bear, whatever that was. Remember that shit? Brown bear, brown bear. What do you see? Sure. I hate it. You don't even know it. I, no, hate I have it. no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I hate it. But he, he learned, he studies the words, and now he's able to read the book. I said, this is the same energy you have to keep. So, yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Ask me for help. You, it's called sight words. You can't sound out the word the. Ask yeah. me for help. I can help you with that. Don't sit there and try to get it and you're not going to get it. You're just going to sit there frustrated. Ask for help. Because if I need help, I'm going to ask. If I need some, if I need you to do something for me, if I need just, just your mom to do something, your Uncle Sean, if I need help, I'm going to ask for help. Never be afraid for that. That's 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 something you have to take through your entire life. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's it's hard at times, maybe, yeah, but you better muster up that shit and ask for some help. Put yeah. that pride aside, ask for help. Yeah, okay. and that's what it comes to being an example for the kids. Um, I am I am famous for not being right. Yeah. <laughs> wrong I, is strong. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, if if I, if there's anything I'm consistent in, it's being wrong. Mm. Um, it, the camping trip that we went on back in April was a prime example. Mm. I was so frustrated and so uh so worried about everything going right that I wasn't able to enjoy myself on the trip and, and not that I didn't enjoy myself at all there were a lot of you know we had a lot of fun but it, a lot of frustration came out and it was directed towards the kids that first week after the camp trip was essentially me apologizing to both kids mm -hmm. for being a dick and, and to me it's important for them to see that right that 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 I acknowledge I made a mistake and that I'm apologizing for making a mistake and that I'm gonna try to do better. Because that's what they need to see in order for them to follow that example. Absolutely. I can't just pretend I'm perfect and then try to teach them how to deal with coping with, you know, shortcomings mm -hmm. when I'm portraying myself to be on some some altar, some pedestal, some, you know, some pillar of perfection yeah. that, that doesn't exist. Um, my son, uh, uh, he's already in sports. He's been playing football for a couple of years. He just finished his first basketball season. Um, I, 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 I hate to say it, but he's gotten used to losing. <laughs> um, as much Bill's as it, character, man. As, it, 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 but you know he's learned how to deal with that. At mm -hmm. first, it was tough because you know anytime, anytime his team lost, oh the other team cheated. Oh they, the players cheated. Yeah. Oh the referees cheated. Like no 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 no. That's not how that works. Yeah. All right. You can't get mad and say somebody cheated because you lost. You have to dig deep. Look and see what could I have done better? What can my team have done better? And where, you know, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve that that improvement? Right now with basketball, he's coming off a hard, hard basketball season. They won two games out of six months. Mm. Um, I'm not particularly thrilled about it because we talked about the whole coaching and everything situation. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but I will say that the team, you know, when I saw their last game compared to the first game I watched, they they look a lot better. They're still not, you know, there's still a lot of room for improvement, but they are addressing it and, and they're getting a lot better. The kids are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's big. I saw that from, you know, just talking to him and his other teammates. I saw that they are all aspiring to do better. He's here for the summer. He has been hounding me. Last week, we didn't do anything. Last week, I said, look, it's your first week of summer vacation. Enjoy yourself. Because like you said, summer, they lose everything. My son has homework. Today, he had to research uh, sinkholes. Oh, wow. You know, I came home and he did his he did his research. He right get, at the dinner table. I said, "Here, tell us about sinkholes," and he did. wasn't perfect. He you know some things he forgot, but he definitely did his homework on mm -hmm. it. So, and, you know, he's gonna have a you know a homework assignment every day, and he's been hounding me. And we did it this morning. That's why we went to play basketball because he realizes he needs to work on his handling. He needs to work on his defense, and he needs to perfect his shot. He he recognizes that now because he is used to seeing that loss and he's used to coming back and improving where he has a problem is winning oh. he is there is such a thing as a sore winner oh, yeah and when he's when he wins at something boy is he hard to deal with 
because at that point it's all bragging is it, it's all this crazy it, it's on we and if you don't know what that means look it up um it's just <laughs> it, it's hubris it's straight hubris and it, and it's not it's not good and I'm, right now i'm trying to temper that like hey listen yeah you were right or yeah you won the game you need to take you need to approach this with a little more humility with mm-hmm. it because you you might not win the next one yeah, be and then what happens they're going to start talking major crap because you were talking all this crap and you're not going to like it. Don't tear other people down when you win. Help build them up so that way you're on an even playing field. Exactly. Because that's how you show leadership. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm trying and that's what I try to do. Whenever I do mess up, whenever I do get something, I, I try to show them, hey, this is how you get to that. This is how you make up for your shortcomings. And this is how you avoid shortcomings in the future when you when you know when you do something right. Um and to me, that's being a super dad. It's just being real and being upfront and showing them, you know, just knocking down all the walls and just showing them the layers of everything. Yeah, because absolutely. that's the only way they're going to be able to cope when they get older. And if I'm not setting them up for that, then I'm not doing my job as a father. You're right. You're right. And that is a big thing you said, apologies. Yeah. Apologies, apologies. Never be too proud to apologize. I don't care how old you are or what you do. If you were wrong, especially to these kids... Apologize. That teaches a lot. That shows them a lot. Yeah. And it it brings you closer. You, all right. You know what? Damn. You was right. My bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Even as small as Mason is, when certain things happen or, you know, I forgot. Oh, man. A couple things happened, actually. Something about him in water swimming. Um. Oh, I didn't believe that he can swim without oh. his floaties. Yeah. I was like, dude, you need your floaties to swim. But I can do it. I was like, and I'm a parent. I'm I, I don't I don't want you to drown. You, yo, you know what it is? It, it's you, it's hard to see the kids grow up. I cut my son's nails yesterday. My yep. son is going to be 13 in four weeks. He knows how to cut his nails, but I was like, no, 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 you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am a 34-year-old man. I turned 35 this summer. My father is 65 years old, and whenever I'm helping him with furniture, he tells me, stop doing it because I'm going to hurt myself, and then I'm watching this 65-year-old man try to move a couch um, by yeah, himself. Yeah, that's, yo. You know, so I, yeah, I feel stops. good that I'm in good company. <laughs> it never stops. Yeah, no, you're right, because he's like, Dad, I can do it. I've done it before. Just watch. And I was like, yo, if you jump in that pool and you drown, I'm going to kill you. Just, <laughs> just I'm like gonna that. save you so I can kill you. I'm gonna kill you. He was like, "Just let, let me show you. Let me show you." And me being like, I, "This my baby. That's my boy." Like, uh-huh. no. I, he was like, "Dad, let me show you." And he jumped right in, and he was, he was a was fucking, he was a goddamn dolphin out there, man. It, it's it's hard to watch them yeah. grow from from everything. Even the first accomplishment, that first accomplishment, every father knows this, every parent knows this. That first night, the kid sleeps the whole night through. Yeah, oh. you you sit. I'm an atheist. I prayed for the night <laughs> <laughs> that my son would sleep the whole night through and the first night he did I was up by the crib I was a wreck I thought he died yeah, was, yeah, I'm, like, yeah. I'm looking at his mom like put a mirror under his nose put a mirror under his nose is he real sure? he's real good all right and yeah. you you kick him you kick the crib to wake him up she's like oh yeah hell yeah he's awake <laughs> the whole you, you pray for it you wish for it and then when it happens you panic because yeah. it's so it's hard to watch them grow and to develop and, and to progress yeah that's that goes back to my mom watching me move out she could not handle it no she could not it was it was like a month or two later she's like you know i'm sorry for the way i acted <laughs> i understand that you're becoming a grown man now and this is gonna happen and you know this that and the third but yeah you're right it's hard to see a baby grow up and you have to 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 get let it go let it go yeah. get your ass in that pool go ahead go ride your bike go out there bike go pull up the garbage Go, like this, these are things that you, he he's like, Dad. I know. I was like, Listen, I'm gonna tell you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they they are following what we taught them, and you have to learn. You know, yeah, learn learn to let them grow. You gotta learn to apologize. You gotta learn, at least, like I said, and with my like I said, with my daughters, I'm trying. I want to be perfect. I want to be. I want. I need to be the every man for them. But with Mason, I was like, you need to learn how to lose. You need to learn how to learn these lessons. You need to learn that <laughs> you don't know everything. You say you need to learn how to lose. The first thing he did was look at you like, Pfft. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw the look. <laughs> now he's looking at me like he mad because I sold him out. <laughs> he giving you the shut up face. <laughs> Remember that one? Stop. <laughs> Oh uh, no! But- <laughs> Yo, your son just stabbed me like four times. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure he just phone checked me in prison right now. <laughs> yeah, well, hey man, listen, <laughs> I can't help you, buddy. But no, um, it's it is something that we have to as parents, as men, 
as men, because we have a lot of pride. Yes. We don't want to apologize. We think we're right every single time. <laughs> every single time it's until you get until you, until you get married. Yeah. And you're wrong. Always. 24-7. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, but no, it's it's it is something that, like I said, as men, we have to work on and, and teach our little boys. You know what I mean? And yeah, we gotta teach the girls too. Don't get me wrong, but we have our boys have to be the type of man to, to admit their wrongs, to admit, listen, I messed up. And let's work on fixing it. Figure out how to fix it. Why we should fix it. Where did I go wrong? Let's 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 watch tape on basketball. Let's watch yeah. tape. Where can I improve? Right there. All right, let's do that. I'm cool with that. With him, remember with the whole bike thing. Mm -hmm. He was like, "I right, I fell yesterday. I remember this. The, the bruises are here. Yeah. I got my helmet on. I'm ready to listen to your instructions because yesterday I realized I didn't listen to you. Yeah. I didn't listen to you, and that's why I failed. I'm gonna listen to you today." To see what happens, let's, let's let's try this thing out, and it works out. Now he's riding his bike all over the damn place like a like a damn fool. It's ridiculous, and even with that, I'm like, damn, he really he's really out. He's really down the block, like he's riding by himself. It's hard to watch things like that, but you gotta understand this is what you prepared them for. Everything you're doing is what you're preparing them for later. Yeah, and you know that guys, you definitely want to 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 humble yourself. Yeah, and and it's good when 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 you can because you know it, it, it's it's hard watching the kids grow and watching them progress and watching them develop into their own thing, their own person. Yeah, hard, and, and it's it's yeah. hard. It's hard. It's hard because it's heart wrenching because mm -hmm. you realize that's one less thing they need me for. Yeah, yo, damn, yeah, you're right. Jesus, I, I'm I'm telling you, I get deep sometimes. Am I getting old? I'm I'm somebody eventually gonna tell me I'm wrong right now, but I'm, I'm right now I'm feeling good about it. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Tell you, more people should listen to me. But yeah, it's one <laughs> less thing that they need us for, and that hurts. But then, like, once you get through that, you're proud. You're proud, yeah. You're yeah, like, man, yeah. that is one thing that he can do on his own, and, and I helped that. And it's simple you know? shit. Like, he loves sandwiches. Loves sandwiches. I don't understand how. I taught, I was like, listen, I'm not going to be making these damn sandwiches for you all the time. I can't do it. This is how you do it. And he learned how to make this. I taught him how to make the sandwich. He knows how to make it his own way. And now... It's weird. He gets up. I'm hungry. I'll be back. And he makes his. It's simple, simple. Yeah. But he makes his own sandwich. I was like, you ain't. You, know, you sure you need me to? You need me to open that for? I got it. I got it, Dad. <laughs> like, All right, man. <laughs> you know how bad it is, my son. Because my, you know, my son's at an age where he stays home. You yeah. know, when he's on summer vacation. Um, Annabelle goes to school. Lorraine works. I work. My son's at home. For, at home, he's home alone most sure. of the time, and we do it. Don't don't call DCF on me, folks. Uh, we we yeah. do it because he's proven that he is responsible enough. My son cooks, and I don't mean like just microwave and hot those. Granted, that's what he does most of the time. Mm -hmm. But like you know, like what, I mean, I know I'm not saying he's sitting there chefing it up in the kitchen. No, he gets like a Totino's party pizza or some pizza rolls. He knows how to work the oven. He knows to be careful. He knows where the mitts are. Um, I, I know he knows where the mitts are because they're all, they're never where they belong when I get home. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's a mess. But he he he's growing. He's learning how to take care of himself. Right. You know what I mean? He's showered when I get home, and that's 99 percent because Lorraine told him to shower before I get home. Uh, but you. Like he knows to brush his teeth on his own. Like these little things that little I'm things. like, did you brush your teeth? Y yeah, I did after I ate because that's what I'm supposed to do. You've been telling me that for the last 12 years. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's good to see. And, and like I said, it, 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 there is a sense of pride that comes after the sting. You know, like it sucks that he doesn't need me anymore. But you know what? Damn it. He doesn't need me. Any he doesn't need me for that anymore. And, it, and it's it's good to see it, you know, after it hurts. Yeah. But once I'm done crying about it. Yeah. But curls up into a ball. Exactly. You know, funny you say about he knows how to work the stove and the and the oven. I leave the oven on every single time. Something's wrong with you. I don't know. I don't know what's this wrong. This is why <laughs> this is why your wife don't let you leave anything plugged in. Yeah, I leave the oven. I made ribs yesterday. Left the oven on well after the ribs were done. My daughter was like, "So, are you still using it?" And the pride of me was like, "Yeah, I'm still using. It. I'm about to put something else in there." <laughs> I wasn't. I left it on for another twenty minutes and shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I was I was great in that moment, but you know, I gotta have a little fun. Yeah, <laughs> goddamn, shit. it's all about having a good time. Yeah, man. But folks, yeah, man, let let us know. Let us know your story. You got something to say? You want to talk? Yeah. Shout out to my daughter that came out last week and cried because she was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to freaking. Nice to know talk. she's not self conscious about it. Yeah, she was supposed to talk. I, oh, you know, in, um, in the in the Father's Day card that I got, yeah, I said, you know, I love you. Thank you for being there for us. 
and one day I will speak on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I would give her shit for like a week. Uh, and I trust me, I fully expected her not to speak. Yeah, I fully expected that. Yeah, but I'm a, I'm a little surprised that my son spoke as much as he did. Yeah, I'm shit, man. I'm, I'm surprised he ain't speaking all the shit he was talking. Um, yeah, man, she came. She was the whole topic yesterday because she found it. I was like, oh, that's great. You're gonna read it. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm sure. We're gonna do this. She was like, yeah, you're right. Nope. 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 <laughs> she said. Hello. That was it. <laughs> but um, shouts to her. Shouts to my daughters. Uh, and uh, guys, guys, let us know, you know, some stories that you had to, you know, let your, your son or your daughter know, hey, I was wrong. Or, hey, this is what you need to do to improve this. This is what I did to improve this so I don't make this mistake again. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not easy, but it's your kids. So it, it makes it a little bit more. They're young. Understand that you're still shaping their minds. Yeah, and you know we're over here. We're we're raising kids still. Mm -hmm. I I want some perspective on this for all listeners out here. Anybody that's an older parent who has adult children, mm. what was the first time you looked at your child and said you're an adult? Mm. What is the first time that happened? Because I'm pretty sure that still hasn't happened with my father yet. <laughs> <laughs> what? I want to know what I need to do. Really, it's what I'm asking you oh, for is tips. <laughs> I need some help. But yeah, no, get, let us know. That, that would be an interesting perspective because we're, you know, we're still young. We're, we're in, I'm in my 30s. Raul's still a young kid. Um, yeah, but, yeah. you know, we are raising children still. What what happened? When was the first time you looked at your child and said, man, he, he, they're an adult. Like, there's nothing I can do at this point. Yeah, was man. it when they moved out? Was it when they got married? Was it when they got divorced? When was that moment for you? Um, we'd love to hear it. Comment on our social media. Hit us up on Facebook at the Pops on Podcast. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at the Pops on Pod. Instagram at the Pops on Podcast. Email us at nodadjokes at gmail.com. Or leave us a favorite dad joke. Uh, you can call us. Bro, where can they call us from? 321 405 2219. Or hit us up on Snapchat at pops on underscore snap. And <clears throat> save our number. And what? <clears throat> Raul hates frogs, but he's got one in his throat. Yeah, it's freaking weird. Um, save our number, 321-405-2219, and add us to your, your, your contact list so you can be added to the WhatsApp uh, group. Uh, we send videos. We send uh, little dad jokes here and there. You can send us some reviews via voice notes, uh, dad jokes via voice notes. Whatever you got, we want to hear it. We want to see it. We want to post it. Just make sure it's tasteful. Absolutely. Um, so that about wraps it up for us this week here. Uh, special announcement. Next week, we actually have a guest lined up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're excited about this one. Uh, we touched on our topic last week about uh, gender identity. And uh, a, a friend of mine, a fellow comedian out of the Orlando area, James Yan. Uh, he is the host of The Lowdown on Sling TV. You can also hear him on The Monsters in the Morning on 104.1 in the Orlando area or on uh, the... Um, Real Laughs on 104.1 as well on the evening times. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be with us next week, giving us some insight into his own parental situation. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll leave the tease at that. But come in for that. That's going to be a fun time. Uh, James Young is one of my favorite comedians to work with. And just a cool guy. I always love hanging out with him Absolutely. whenever I get a chance. So uh, keep an eye out for that. That'll be next week's episode. Until then, uh, we're signing off. On behalf of myself, I'm Jay Alvarez. Don't forget, spoil kids, not movies. And I'm Raul. Please, no dad jokes. Peace. Peace.